Welcome to the Blaster Tag Association match of the week. This week is the White Rangers versus Davis Nerf Club. The White Rangers are on your left and Davis is on your right. We are playing King of the Hill, one of several game types offered by the Blaster Tag Association. Before we get started, if you are new to the BTA and you'd like to find out more, you can go to our website, blastertagassociation.com, to find out all you need to know about the different game types available, including starting your own league. But let's get into this match. At the start of every match is the rush to gain control of the hill points. Now each team does have one hill point that is close to their spawn and easier to access. A for the White Rangers and C for Davis Nerf Club. The middle point B is the most hotly contested and hardest to gain control of. There is a wide open area with a good amount of cover space uh, further out from that point. So you really need to gain control of the field before you take control of it. You'll see here one of those Davis Nerf Club players trying to get that middle point, but being pinned down by a White Rangers player and tagged before he can flip that timer to the correct side. Now, we are using cube timers that do need to be spun over to their proper color currently, but we do have a better solution in the process of being built right now, which we are all very much looking forward to. But for the time being, these are what we have. Now you'll see that Davis Nerf, Nerf Club was able to gain control of that middle point and has set up a pretty good position here, though we do see a player from the White Rangers shooting down the middle line, having free access to those Davis Nerf Club players, able to take one out, uh, allowing one of their White Rangers players to try and push up, but on the top side of your screen, you will see Davis Nerf Club has progressed and pushed onto the White Rangers side of the field, uh, forcing them to play further back and really exerting uh, pressure on the White Rangers, preventing them from being able to move up and really establish a good foothold on the field. You can really sit in this overhead as the White Rangers try to spawn in on the top side of your field to get a different angle on those forward players, taking a couple of them out and moving into that middle point to try and flip it over, and they do get it. Now, unfortunately, the players on the White Rangers were tagged out shortly after, and they were not able to hold this middle point, which is a major bummer for them, as it would have been a great time to hold had they not lost all of their team on that rush. This has allowed the Davis Nerf Club to push up and again re-exert themselves and reassert themselves rather as a dominant force on the field playing forward more so than the White Rangers. Now we do have this, this White Rangers player again in this corner spot but he is having his attention drawn by the player from Davis, Davis Nerf Club that is wanting to spawn and as soon as he turns his head he does pop into spawn, get the tag and take out their corner pressure allowing Davis Nerf Club to again start to push up, but they are actually not able to because a number of those players are tagged out. And we do have almost everybody tagged out currently on both teams with one player sitting in for Davis. So Davis is just getting to accrue time right here without anything they have to do. And let's see how the White Rangers want to try and attack this. They are gonna try and just rush straight in as they did not have any Davis Nerf Club members to uh, compete with as they spawn in, but they did not get to that point quick enough as Davis Nerf Club has spawned in. And even though they are pushing forward, they are trading out one for one in most cases, it seems here, which is favorable for Davis Nerf Club because they do have control of that middle point. That is what they want to do. They are more than happy to trade a body for a body and send those players back to their respawn. Now, if you don't know, if you are new to the King of the Hill format, when players are tagged out, they do head back to their spawn point, as you can see by those tents on the screen right now. And they will take a 15 second respawn timer, and then they can come in on any side of the field that is their color boundary. So you'll see on the overhead portions that there is a red and blue boundary outside of the field, and that is where they may spawn in from. Now we did have a player from White Rangers flip the point, but he was tagged before uh, he actually successfully flipped that timer, so the refs will come in and flip timer back. And we do keep track of how much time took place between that flip and the referee actually flipping it back to the correct timer, so we can adjust and accommodate the end results appropriately. Now again, Davis doesn't need to do too much of this scene to make sure that they are not going to get swarmed and out uh, maneuvered by White Rangers so they can maintain the advantage on the field that they have. 
we do see the White Rangers, at least one of their players right here, pushed up to that middle line across the diagonal of the field and trying to get some pressure applied. One of the Davis players is tagged out as he tries to bunker him. And we see them still in the backfield, though, for the White Rangers. They are not able to successfully push up. As actually, as I say that, one does make the rush for the middle point, takes control of it, is tagged out afterwards, but they do maintain control of that currently. The Davis Nerf Club is staying further back. They do have a few players out, and they are going to wait until they spawn back in to make this push for the middle point to take it back. We are in the final minute now of the match, and they are going to continue to tag out players as Davis Nerf Club comes in. Now, this is where things switch, and White Rangers are more than happy to, again, make those one-for-one -one trades that Davis Nerf Club was happy to do earlier. We can see on the bottom and top of your screen in uh, kitty corner positions, the White Rangers player and the Davis Nerf Club player. They could have shots on each other here if one peeks out and one actually does go for the rush, take out that player, but he is actually unsuccessful in his push. I'm sorry, that was an unsuccessful rush for that middle point, and this allows White Rangers to move up a little bit further, though they are still looking actually fairly good here. As I say that, though, Kyle comes in for Davis Nerf Club, takes that middle point, eliminates one of the players. As we enter the final few seconds of the match, Davis will end up with the win. 583 seconds total to the 438 seconds of the White Rangers for a difference of 145 seconds, I believe. That is a solid victory for Davis Nerf Club. They are one of the more experienced teams, and this is not the biggest surprise, but the White Rangers have made a good showing, and they will continue to improve as they are a newer team. Now, I do want to take a moment to thank our pledge sponsors for the Blaster Tech Association, Project FEL, Foam Blast, Containment Crew, Velocity Blasters, and Light Tech. They are dedicated to the growth of the competitive nerf hobby, so support them as well. That's going to do it for this match, but keep your eyes open for more matches like this in the following weeks. It is something we want to continue to showcase the competitive side of this Nerf hobby. It is a fabulous and wonderful thing. If you have any questions about these formats, feel free to leave those in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.